pots of the fruit of the ground and offering unto the Lord. Okay, where did the fruit come from that he brought the offering from? From the ground. He brought the fruit of the ground. Was not the ground cursed? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Should he have been bringing any a cursed thing to God for an offering? No. No. So that's like bringing technology, something that's of the serpent. Like technology or TV, things that were from the ground, like vanity. So he brought up the fruit of the ground. So basically from the cursed ground, he's trying to offer something unto the Lord. Mm -hmm. And Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering, but unto Cain and to his offering, he had not respect. And Cain was very wroth and his countenance fell. Okay, so we'll look at these different offerings. Why do you guys think God had respect? Unto Abel's offering, which was from the firstlings of his flock, versus he not having respect. Unto Cain's offering, which was from the fruit of the ground. The source. Each was from a different source. Um, for instance, um, Abel's was from the um, the 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 the, the um, animals that God had made with his um not made but made with his hands formed yeah okay and then um abel Cain's Cain's was from like you said the cursed ground so anything that had um that was like i would say vanity like things that it's not it's not pleasing to god like you like you can say hair weaves or nails or eyelashes or things like that okay all right, so, so basically, I think at the end of the day, it was just because the ground was cursed. And he tried to bring fruit from something that was cursed to God as an offering. Versus Abel took the first and the fattest of his flock. Um, so he took the best. He gave God his best versus just, you know, giving him whatever. Um, and then verse 6 says, And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth? And why is there count thy countenance fallen? If thou doest well, shall thou not be accepted? And if thou does not well, then lieth at the door. And unto so, thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so basically just um, uh, between these two, uh, the one, so it, it was not right to give an offering from the ground. Just simply, if whatever it is, whatever came from the ground was not supposed to be offered to God as a sacrifice. Well, I think it was because it's their ground was cursed. And I think because he also didn't simply. give God his best. He didn't give God his best either. What if, yeah, so what if it was, let's say, um, it was the best, but from the ground. So, for example, if it was like the best, um, I don't know, potatoes or whatever that came from the ground. I'm just wondering. But that's um, the thing. He brought something from a place as an offering that wasn't alive. Yeah. Is it also the reason why even after all this? Ground. Yeah. Abel brought animals first things of his flock. Yeah. It was a sacrifice with his offering. There was no sacrifice with Cain's offering. Mm -hmm. And that's that's the premise of altars. When when they atoned for their sins, they brought living sacrifices. There yeah, if there's no sacrifice, there's not a real it's not a real offering. It's not an offering, okay. So that means Cain was in the you can go ahead. No, no, you go ahead. Okay, okay. I was wondering. It says 
um, when they grew up, Abel, okay, I'm reading from my Bible, the NLT, when they grew up, Abel became a shepherd while Cain cultivated the land, the ground, sorry. So is it because then Cain just chose to work on the ground? So he was cursed yeah. from the beginning. That's all he That's had. what I was going to say. Yeah. He was in the wrong line of work. Yeah. So I, I, I think what it means there, when it says that he was a tiller of the ground, it means he was a worker of iniquity. I, like a, like a, basically like, I think the ground there represents the flesh. He was, he was fleshly. Idolatry. Okay. So witchcraft. And, and, the, and the way that I know that is because in verse seven, it says, if thou doest well, shall thou not be accepted? But if you don't mm-hmm. do well, sin lieth at the door. How do you go straight to talking about sin? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, that makes sense. So he was in the divination. So it's also oh, basically, I think the ground there represents if he was a, a tiller of the ground is work is, is somebody who lives of the flesh and not in the spirit. Right. Because the flesh came from the earth. I mean, it came not from the earth, from the ground. The flesh came from the ground. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or maybe he was even just reckless. I think he was, he just... was one that lived in his flesh. Yeah. It was kind of fleshly. You know how y'all had the difference between like. A, a carnal Christian versus somebody who lives in the spirit. So that's what I think it represents. And that's why God is saying here, if you don't do well, then sin is going to lie at the door. If you're living in your flesh, what you're going to get into? Sin. Yeah, because you're of the mm-hmm. world. You're, no, you're not, you're not, um, you're not renewing your mind in the world. In, well, you're not, you're in the world. You're following the patterns of the world. So basically it was showing there are two paths that they chose. One chose to be carnal and fleshly. He was a tiller of the ground. And the other one chose to be like a shepherd, right? Which was basically somebody that lived in the spirit. So when you look at even this part here, this is another revelation here too that I've like, I never really paid attention to before either. And it says, if you don't do well, basically sin lies at the door. And unto thee shall be his desire. So it's basically saying when you live in the flesh, your desire will be to sin. And thou, so basically, don't rule over him. So basically, God is saying, (laughs) it's calling sin a him. You see that? So is that Satan? I don't know. What do y'all think? It's referring to sin as a him. And thou shall rule over him. We're supposed to be able to rule over sin. But it's referring to him, to it as a him. It's guys, it's, it's so many, it's so funny because it's like everything when it's referred to, like even when God refers to the earth, he refers to her as a her. And you guys Patience. will do yeah. that later. Uh-huh. What does your original um, Bible say? Because mine says um, to rule over it. Could you maybe check and see? Okay. So, yeah, let's just check that because it, I, don't, I don't recall seeing it say that before. So this is chapter 4. Yeah. Verse 7. And if you do well, is there not acceptance? And if you do not well, sin is crouching at the door and its desire is towards you, but you should rule over. It does say it in here. It doesn't say yeah. him in this one. And yeah, in my it says eat as well. Okay. Mine too. Was... Okay. So where's my good part that we're getting to? Okay, we're getting there. We're getting there. Okay. So and verse... 8 says, and Cain talked with Abel, his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and slew him. Okay, so here we are. Now he's let, he's, he's basically bitter towards his brother because Abel didn't do nothing. Mm-hmm. He didn't do anything. All he did was give God the right offering. The right, yeah. He didn't do anything to Cain. 
All right, so here goes Cain, and now he he internalizes this. He has um, bitterness towards his brother, and finally he kills his brother. And then mm -hmm. verse 9 says, And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? This right here should let you know that Cain was carnal. Yeah. yeah it was. Mm -hmm. Who talks to God like that? Like yeah. that, mm -hmm. exactly. Yeah, he was very disrespectful. That sounds like a cardinal person, right? Yeah. yeah. Like, I, don't know what arrogant. I don't know what that dude is. Am I his keeper? No respect. No respect. Nope. And he said, what hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. Did it cry from the earth? From the ground. No. <laughs> ground. So the blood is crying from the ground, but now mm -hmm. watch what the earth does. In verse 11. And now thou art cursed from the earth, which mm -hmm. had opened up her mouth, she has a mouth, to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. Oh, God. <laughs> Jesus. It's a puzzle. Okay, so the ground is different from the earth. Mm -hmm. Abel's blood is crying from the ground. And then now the earth had to open up her mouth to receive the brother's blood. Right. Does the earth have a mouth? Yes. Yes. Look at this. Mm -hmm. There's a couple of stuff here. The, the blood has a mouth. It's crying. Right. Yes. Blood. blood is crying. Yes. Wait. Blood is crying. Did y'all get Right. His blood is crying unto God from the ground. So it's alive. Blood is alive, has the ability to cry. Wow. And then it starts crying, and now the earth opens up her mouth. And has to drink the brother's blood. Interesting. The Bible says, and now thou art cursed the earth. Not from the ground. The ground was already cursed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and now the earth is cursing Cain because she had to open up her mouth. And notice that it refers to the earth as her. Interesting. So is this where we get into Mother Earth, that demon? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, yeah, that's why they call her Mother Earth. Wow. So there's a difference between the ground and the earth here that we're seeing again. The earth is alive. She opened her mouth, follows up the blood. Now Cain is cursed from the earth. The Bible says in verse 12, when thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength. So the ground is also a her. A fugitive and a vagabond shall thou be. In the earth. In the earth. Okay, did y'all hold up? What a bit. When she, the ground, right, right, will not yield forth her strength. Right? But you shall be a fugitive in the vagabond, not in the ground, in the earth. Yeah. Patience, is this what you're reading on the screen to us? Mm -hmm. What version is this? If you may tell me, please. King James. Like mm -hmm. what Bible? King James. King Yo, James. NLT. Yeah. Where it says verse eleven, it says on my NLT, now you are cursed and banished from the ground. Mm -hmm. It says KJV is the earth. Yep, like they got the wrong interpretation there. Yeah, mine too. The NIV has it wrong. It's called the um ground, the earth, the ground. Yep, it could, that's the thing because we think the earth is the ground, but that's not what it mm -hmm. says. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, because there there is a difference. Mm -hmm. 
I'm still stuck on the fact that the blood is alive. And in my mind, I'm thinking it's alive because it carries all of the DNA sequence of, of the man. It has all of the um, the genetics. And the life. Life is the in life. the life. Yeah. So yeah. everything, everything that I think this, I think I was telling you guys is everything that is written in your book in heaven is basically, um, how do I put it? imprinted in the dna and in your blood wow and so your blood in this instance the blood was crying your blood is able to testify of everything that is in your book mm. in That's heaven the reason why if somebody drinks your blood or let's say they kill you now they can take your blood and that blood can testify and give unto them the wealth that would have been yours. Mm. That's why they have to keep making sacrifices when they sell mm. their soul for money. Mm. They have to keep using somebody's destiny. To they have the to have more blood to testify and pull the wealth from. Mm. Wow. Mm. This is oh, yeah, patience. I'm still a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if I can call it confused or I feel like it's a puzzle from nine verse nine to to, to twelve. Mm -hmm. Can you see this? Screen? I don't know everything. They're talking about the earth. Can you maybe explain more slowly by slowly from nine? Okay, so what are you trying to get a better understanding of? The difference between the, the earth, earth? Yeah, the earth, uh, the ground swallowing, the, you know, all that. I just feel like it's a little bit confusing to me. Okay. Is it the difference between the ground and earth that you need understanding of? Yeah. Okay. Yes, and the ground and the earth swallowing the blood and... The, okay, are you looking at the screen? Yes. Okay. So, verse 9, where it says, and the, and the Lord said to Cain, where is thy brother Abel? And he said, I know not, am I my brother's keeper? Verse 10 mm -hmm. says, and he said, God said, God is basically saying to, to Cain, what hast thou done? The voice of your brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. So, we're just clarifying mm -hmm. that the blood had the ability to cry, which means it is alive. And it's crying the blood, from the ground. It's crying from the ground. Remember when Lorraine asked the question, well, what was the difference between the ground and the earth? And mm -hmm. um, I said to her, okay, Lorraine, if I said to you, Lorraine, I don't know, brought forth a baby or whatever, right? She just had a yes. baby. So it's Lorraine that had the baby. Lorraine is alive, correct? Mm -hmm. Now, if I take some scissors and I cut Lorraine's hair off, and let's say I make a wig with it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I give the wig to somebody, I don't know, who's bald or something. Now, mm -hmm. is that wig alive? No. Okay. But the wig is still a part of Lorraine, right? Yes. But it's not alive. Yes. The difference between the ground and the earth is the earth is, a, is alive. It's alive, okay. The ground is a part of the earth, but it's not alive. Yes. But it's still so a the, part of the earth. Yes. So when the, the ground is like the physical, this the soil and whatever, this physical thing. That yes, was, right. exactly. Okay. But the earth is the one that had to, the Bible says next, that had to open up her mouth because she's alive to receive. Okay. The brother's blood because whenever you're dealing with something that's alive it has to interact with something else that's alive okay so you have the blood sitting on the ground and the ground is not alive yes. right yes. and it's crying to god and it's telling god hey um this is what my brother did to me is testifying against Cain. and now another thing that's alive the earth now has to come and open up her mouth to receive that blood well, yes understood very clear so now it makes sense? Yeah, it makes sense now. It makes okay. sense. I got it. All right. So patience. All of the um, you know, the termination of babies and all of that, the earth is swallowing all that blood. It's being sacrificed wow. to Molech. 
Yeah, it's yeah. being sacrificed, right? And it's and why that's part of the reason why all of creation is groaning for the manifestation yeah. of the sons of God. Yeah, it's groaning because every time blood is spilled, there's other things that has to happen, and we can see it right here because everything is alive. Yeah. So does that mean that Cain um, took Abel's destiny because he shed his blood? Like sort of like um, taking his star? No, not not necessarily. He, he, just, was, yeah. he just murdered his brother because he was he got bitter. Now, yeah. obviously, for those who like sell their soul, that's why I tell all the people all the time, like there's no point in selling your soul to the devil because he doesn't even have the money that you're selling your soul for. Yeah. You still have to give him a sacrifice, which is kill somebody, which is really where he's getting the wealth from anyway, because he knows <laughs> that human being that God has created, there's wealth, there's an inheritance that's already laid up for us, and your blood testifies of that. So if your blood is spilled, then they're able to steal whatever wealth that would have been yours, and then now he's able to transfer it to that person that sold their soul. So essentially, he's not really giving them nothing. He owns nothing. He owns nothing. He's just taking it from the blood and transferring it. That's why they have to keep making more and more blood sacrifice. But the devil doesn't have it to give to them. Yeah. Taking it from the blood. It's like, what you need the devil for? I mean, really, you can do it on your own. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> but, but for real, it's not. I mean, either way, you go to hell. <laughs> <laughs> so what what you gonna make a deal with him for? He's not giving you nothing. He's like a pimp. He's taking he's taking something out of it, the middleman. <laughs> Basically, and then he gets your soul. But he didn't give you nothing. Nope. You thought he gave you something. What a cheap deal. That's the worst deal in the world. I'm just saying. <laughs> Well, that's why the Bible says, what is it profit of man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? That's not a good trade. You didn't gain nothing. The devil's a trickster, man. Now, you're making a deal with somebody that clearly, it clearly says that their biggest, uh, I don't know, occupation is to steal, kill, and destroy and you know he's a liar. Like he tells you I'm a liar and you still believe him. Well, that's that's how desperate people get for whatever it is they're selling their soul for. That's a full trade off. And the thing is though, is that they have it already. What they need, they have. They just gotta request it from God, the right source. Exactly. In fact, he they they have more than he does. But he's deceiving them out of their wealth that he don't even have for himself. Exactly. He already lost everything. He already lost everything, including the opportunity to repent. All of that he already lost. So let's keep reading because we still haven't gotten to the other part, the part I'm trying to get to yet. All right. So now verse 11 says, and now thou art cursed from the earth, right? So the earth had to open up the mouth to take up the brother's blood. Now the earth curse versus Cain. Um, which had opened up, you know, mouth. So then, then verse 12 says, when thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength. A fugitive and a vagabond shall thou be in the earth. And Cain, so basically it's letting him know, even in the spiritual realm, and in, 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 because everything's alive, you'll be a vagabond and a fugitive. When you, you basically, you'll try to work and it's not going to yield, you're not going to be able to bear any fruit, basically. Is basically what this curse is. And there's a lot of people where when when the when the witches and warlocks, when they speak to the earth, they can command it to swallow up your business. They can command it to to literally to swallow you up. They can command I mean just so many things. They can command it to swallow up your finances. And that's why it seems like what doesn't it, it seems like every time you know, they get money, it just it just goes. I can't even tell you where it went. Right. Of course you can't. It got swallowed up. You got swallowed up. But the thing is, remember, we have authority over all of these things. So if a witch speaks to it, it has to listen. 
until we take authority. All right, so let's keep reading. And then behold, this Cain is still talking to the Lord here in verse 14. He says, behold, that has driven me out this day from the face of the earth and from thy face shall I be hid. And and he's basically saying I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond in the earth. And he says, it shall come to pass that everyone that find him shall slay him. So he's basically saying, well, God, you know, basically, if I'm going to be a fugitive and a vagabond, that means anybody that finds me will kill me. And the Lord says unto him, therefore, whoever slayeth Cain, vengeance, shall be taken on him, him sevenfold. And the Lord set a mark upon Cain, lest any finding him should kill him. And Cain went forth from the presence of the Lord and dwelt in the land of Nod on the east of Eden. Y'all see this? So now you have Adam and Eve who were formed. God created, you know, put his hands in the in the dust, formed them, it became a living soul. Now the woman's seed starts having children, right? She and Eve, I mean she and um and Adam, Adam and Eve, they start having kids. We have Cain and Abel, the first, you know, couple of kids. Now one kills his brother. And then now Cain is being kicked out of the presence of the Lord into a different part of the land, not, in, not, not close to where the garden or anything was anymore. Now he's going into different territory. Who's over there? The other part of men. The other people. The other people. Which people? The people who were created in, in, who in were the sixth day. The people yeah. who were made, not the people who were born. I mean, right. not the people who were formed. Not the people who were formed and became a living soul, but the people who were made who came forth from the earth and you know when God and God spoke and created them. Right. Okay? So this is the this is where Cain is kind of he's getting kicked out of everywhere. So he now he's basically going into a different back backwards to these people who has been alive forever. So now he goes into the land of Nod. And verse 17 says, And Cain knew his wife, and she conceived and bare Enoch. And he built a city and called the name of the city after the name of his son. Okay, did y'all catch this? You paying attention. Mm -hmm. And unto Enoch was born Erad, and Erad begat Mehugiel, and Mehugiel begat Methusiel, and Methusiel begat Lamech. So it keeps going. Um, I'm trying to get to the other part. Mm, Where it stops. There it is. Let's keep going. And so this is a couple of generations here because we have Enoch, we have Methuthiel, then we have Methusiel, and it says, and then Lamech um, took him two wives and, and named one of them Ada and the other was Zillah, and then um, Abda and Jebel. He um, was the father of such that dwelt in tents. So basically he starts you know, kind of having his own generation that came from Cain as starting here. And remember, his wife is from who? The other people, right? Yeah. Now, in verse one, in verse 25, it says, And Adam knew his wife again, and she bare a son, and called his name Seth. For God, she said, has appointed me another seed instead of Abel, whom Cain slew. So she, she basically ended up having another son. And then the Bible says that, and to Seth, to him also, there was born a son and called his name Enos. Okay. Then began men to call upon the name of the Lord. There's something missing. Let me make sure it's not in here. 
and took this out too. Oh my goodness. Keep taking stuff out. Okay, let me go into my original Bible here. I'm going to get um, chapter 4. Verse 26 is missing something. We got to know the word, y'all. So when they change stuff, you can tell. <laughs> All right. Where is that? There we go. Let's keep going. Genesis chapter 5. Y'all ready? Yeah, go ahead. This is where it's at. Now it says, this is the book of the generations of Adam. In the day that God created man, in the likeness of God, he made him. Male and female created he them and blessed them and called their name Adam. Hmm. In the day when they were created. And Adam lived a hundred and thirty years and begat a son. Y'all catching this? In his own likeness. And after his image. And called his name Seth. Was Seth? In the image of God? No, in the no. image of fallen man, Adam. Hmm. So now we have the, we're seeing, okay, Oof. man beginning to be born in their, basically in their own likeness, after their own image, no longer in the image of God. No longer in the image of, yeah. But notice, this is literally telling you the image that those first people were made in. Because it says in verse, in chapter 5, verse 1, this is the book of the generations of Adam. Okay, let me read it slower. In the day that God created man, not in the day that God formed man. Okay, so let's talk about the first group. In the day that God created man. And then it says, in the likeness of God made he him. Male and female created he them. This is chapter one. That's what was said in chapter one. Okay, so which people is it talking about here? The ones in chapter one, the ones that were created. The ones, exactly, the ones that were made, not the ones that were formed. And it yes. says that he called their name Adam. So everything else is talking about after that, when it says Adam, it's talking about them. Oh. It says, and he called their name Adam in the day when he created them. And it says, and then in Adam, which they lived 130 years. And then, they be, then, then he begat a son in his own likeness, okay? When, when you look at the people who were created in the image of God, the ones who were formed and became a living soul, the son that came out of that was in God's likeness, which is the son, the one. Remember, that's, how, that's why Jesus kept saying, He's not only the son of God, but he's also the son of man. It's, it's two different seeds, right? The seed of the serpent, those from that other lineage, and then the seed of the woman who will be the son of God. So this was here is saying that they were and Adam lived 130 years. So it, even though it's saying Adam here, it's talking about them because it did say that God called them, their name Adam. Basically all of them, the male and females that he created. Did y'all see that in mm -hmm. verse two? <laughs> so when it yeah. says 
so in the very next verse says, and Adam lived 130 years, it's talking about this, this group of male and female that he created, not the ones that were formed. formed. Yes, and then they began to give birth to those who were made in their own likeness and after their own image. And then now that group, he called that name death, just like he called the first group Adam. So where are we from? Who are we from then? Now it gets, it's so convoluted, I don't know. <laughs> so because this right here, essentially, it doesn't seem like it's talking about the same Adam. Yeah, it looks it looks a little bit different. It does not look like it's talking about the same Adam. Because and now it literally said in verse two that male and female, he created them and blessed them and called their name Adam. He's talking about the first group from chapter one. Because this is exactly how we said it in chapter one. Male and female, he created them. It said it exactly like that in chapter one. Didn't say like that in chapter two. So this Adam that he's talking about here is different from the Adam that we saw in chapter two. The one that he formed. He's comparing two atoms. There's an atom that was formed. And I, thought, I know that's why some people say, oh, well, Jesus was the second atom. No, he wasn't. If anything, he would be the third. <laughs> Because this Adam in chapter five that is talking about is a group of people. He created them, blessed them, and called their name Adam. Patience, is this why some people say Adam is the devil? Like, you know, the opposite of Christ. Not necessarily, maybe, that maybe that's what they could be seeing because this is a different Adam. This Adam, yeah, yeah, this Adam essentially is from the first group. So he, so oh man, yep, the male and females that he created was from the first group, and then out of that line. It's where they begin to have and reproduce after their own likeness, after their own image. And, and then the struggle between the two seeds begins. So is that why we have to be born again to be in, in Jesus? Ah. What do y'all think? Yes, yes, that makes sense. Creatures. Yes. Mm -hmm. It looks like we yeah. become a new creation. You have to be a new creation. Because if you're not a new creation, then you'll be, you know, just like the rest of them. That's after the likeness of man. Yeah. Why does it say that we're born in iniquity? Born, you know, you're born in your genes shaped in iniquity. So, do you now have a better understanding of the two different groups that are in the earth? Yes. yes. My head hurts. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, Adam 1 from chapter 1 is that lineage. Adam 2 from chapter 2 is where we're from because we were formed, right? And we have a yes. soul. What about from chap uh, chapter 5? Mm -hmm. What about chapter 5? Yeah, like that, that Adam. who is this Adam? Yeah, what about this other Adam? 
So this Adam here is the first one. It's the one from chapter one. Oh, okay. It's, yeah, because this is where it says male and female, he created them. This is exactly how it said it in chapter one. In chapter one. It says, okay. And he called their name Adam. So basically all the people that he created then, he called their name Adam. Okay. So essentially they're the first Adam from chapter one. They're the groups of people that were made, but they weren't formed and they never became a living soul. Mm -hmm. hey, 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 Fisher, could I ask you a question? Mm -hmm, sure. So, so when North Flood happened, okay, did they all got wiped out and they're gone? If they, if they didn't, was in, they don't have souls. Ah, if they ate of the tree of life, yeah. would they be gone? No. No. Why not? Because they die. Because they, they lived the forever. Yeah, because they lived forever, and they will, and they will probably live forever. So, do you think that that's another thing, though? That that brings us to this point. Okay. How are they going to be judged then if they can live forever? Well, would they would they be thrown right straight to hell? Okay. Do you mm -hmm. think? Do you think that this is the reason why? Here, let me pull up the scripture. Uh, pull it up. Mm. All right. Revelation, where it talks about the second death. It talks about where death and Hades are going to be cast into the lake of fire, which essentially is the second death. Yes. Um, let me let her back in. But there is somewhere else where I'm trying to see. I think it where it talks about. Let me pull this up. I don't want to misquote it. All right, it is Matthew. Okay, there it is. Nope, I want a little bit more. So, so Patricia, let me ask you this. Do you think that these folk that, that still around, do you think those are the ones that control all the banks and all these major institutions that's controlling they've, the world? They've been around long enough, too. Oh, my God. But I explain why they never show their faces then. Revelations 21. I mean, but nowadays it don't matter because you can do plastic surgery. You would never know it was the same person. Hmm. We could fake their death and have a whole new face. You'll never know they wow. live forever. Interesting. All right. So maybe this is who the um the 13 families. Bloodline. That's represented yeah. on the dollar bill. Yeah. Yeah, ah, that makes sense. The soulless people, the soulless ones. Exactly. And then you have the 13 tribes of Israel, right? But they, they were from the second group, the 13 tribes of Israel, right? Well, mm -hmm. not the 12, 13, 12. Um, they were from the second group. Not from the first group. So there is a lineage from the first group. And the, the, the seed of the serpent and the enemy trying to make sure that all the wealth stays in the hands of his lineage. Yeah. Interesting. Wow. The original men and women that he corrupted. So wow. patience, these people who say they're not from this earth, we should actually believe them. <laughs> yeah, probably well, could be I right. mean, you can. Well, technically, we're not either. So, yeah, 
I know, but people go, oh, they're crazy. I'm like, mm, not really, actually. You see that in their eyes. I'm like, there's something sinister about them when they speak. It's like there's no soul there. I'm like, oh, you've come yeah, before. It, it, it could be one of the three that deserve it. You don't know. It could, it could be from that lineage. Yeah. And so, if you notice, patients, <laughs> as of late, it's been on a TV. They're talking about it before Congress. They've been talking a lot about aliens, man, more now than ever before. I agree. That is so true. I see it all the time now. I'm like, why is this on the news? News, yeah. They like, even had a Senate hearing out of nowhere. On. Never happened before. Mm -hmm. Well, that's because they're preparing us for what is to come. Because you guys remember, y'all saw his picture on the money and everything, right? The alien. Yeah. 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 All right. Yeah. Do y'all see Revelation 21 on the screen? Yeah. Revelation yes. 21? It says, and I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For well, the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. And there was no more sea. Okay, this is right before the new Jerusalem comes down. And it says, and I saw John and, and I, John, saw the holy city, new Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of the heavens saying, behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. So remember, this is the same great voice that we heard, right? Remember when Lucifer got kicked down and then now it says we're going to have salvation and, you know, and it's basically declaring the things that we need. The same great voice here that's speaking when the new Jerusalem is coming down. It says, I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. And he will dwell with him, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. So y'all see here that heaven and earth to pass away. Right. Do you think that that could be part of the reason? That maybe... God is trying to make sure he completely got rid of, you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. all of them with the earth. Yeah. No residue. Yeah. And that's another thing. If God's bringing a, there's a reason why God is bringing the holy city from heaven down here. Does he make to make sure that it's not corrupted and infiltrated by anybody else? Because essentially, why couldn't he just, you know, clean up the earth and make this the new Jerusalem? You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Isn't it because he also promised that he wouldn't, you know, destroy the earth? Again, yeah. Ah. Yeah, that would also be. But he said by flood. He said he wouldn't do it by flood. He said he wouldn't do it by flood. Never said he wouldn't. Yeah. yeah. But they yeah, did pass it away, though. though. Does it, in, in chapter 20, I mean, verse 21 here, it does say that they, the first heaven and the, and the first earth, That's well, he said there is a new heaven and a new earth. Yeah. So this is not, this is not going to be the same earth that swallowed up the blood. It's not going to be the same earth. It's going to be a new earth. Wow. And this earth going to get burned up. Yep, the first heaven yeah. and the first earth were passed All away. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. Can you pass away if you weren't alive? Hey, no. Whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. Well, hold, hold on, Could you repeat that one? I want to make sure I didn't lose you on that one. Okay. You, you, you We're right that... here. Y'all see the screen. Uh -huh. Revelation 21, chapter 21, verse 1. Uh -huh. Okay. But that is so true. A new yes. heaven and a new earth. earth well, the first yeah. heaven and the first earth were passed away. Passed away. And you yeah. pass away if you weren't alive. Wow. Okay. Wow. Okay, I got it. That is so powerful, patience. That is like really. If you go to a funeral life. and they pass away, were they alive before? Yes, because it was alive. Yes. So is heaven and earth alive? Yes. Yep. Yes. The earth. The earth. earth. Sun, not the, moon, the ground. The wind. <laughs> the ground. Then say the ground. Heaven the and earth. earth passed away. They passed yes. away. 
Yep, they were in the casket. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, they passed away, and then now the New Jerusalem is coming down from God out of mm-hmm. heaven. So they can't live forever. They will die. Yeah, yeah according they to think seen... they can't live forever. Hmm? But they will pass away. They, they think they can live forever. But they forget that even though they weren't formed and became a living soul, they were still created by the word of God. God, yeah. Which is alive. Okay, so if God's word speaks and says, pass away, <laughs> they will cease to exist. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't think they understand. Yeah. Yeah, you might have a loophole there because you ate from the other tree, but I'm just saying. Do y'all think this has something to do with why the devil has to be released again after the tribulation? You know, I always wanted to know why he would want to release him again after... That thousand years considering what he, I mean, he basically created a coup, coup attempt in heaven. Then he did what he did on planet earth. Then he mingled with these people. And yet I don't, I, I always wonder why God allowed him to be loose for a season of all people, him. But it was just for a season. That's been a mystery. Yeah. But it's still been a mystery to me. Why, why he even allowed that? He just, why didn't he just finish him off once and for all, which he will, but. You know, I, I this brings clarity to to why. Because think about it, right? So let's say you have these other people who are from the seed of the serpent. They're they ate of that tree, and now they're able to live forever. But they're evil, right? Let's say they're they're going down to hell, having meetings, and then you know trying to come back up, and all of these different things. I think this lends some light to understanding why some things are chained in the abyss and should never come out in hell. It, that, that, that makes it very interesting. I meant to say, uh, how come there's some angels chained up, but how come the devil's not chained up? Considering he's the one who got this whole thing in motion. I mean, yeah, because, you try to... because essentially, if you have something that's been alive for so long, right, and it's gotten so evil, mm-hmm. and it's chained in hell, that's how. That's why it has to be chained, guys. Wow. I mean, there's stuff that's there's some stuff that's just so evil that is, and that's the stuff that these people are working so hard to release. Yeah. Yeah. You're talking about like a a, a a Baden Abaddon? Not just that. Yeah. But what do you think happened to those those people during the flood? Y'all remember that? Yeah. The flood happened, but if they had eaten up that tree and they couldn't die. Oh my god. What do you think? Happened to them. So that's why I said some of them can walk the earth. Patience. Turn back into a spirit and turn back into a human. Interesting. Patience. Mm -hmm. Um, In verse one, it says on your side, it says, and there will be, there was no more sea. Mm -hmm. Um, Could you explain that? a bit more if you don't mind why is the sea going to go away that's exactly why what we were just saying remember when the flood oh, happened is it because of all those remember creatures and things chained when remember when the flood happened mm-hmm. and all those things that couldn't die they're, they're, and you know there's obviously uh, cities under the ocean we know that yeah yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. right so I, I think that's why it wasn't just the heaven and the earth that had to pass away. The sea had to, too. 
for all so of it. So he's going all out to make sure he remove everything. Everything. Really nothing behind. <laughs> that, that he's being, that he's being so paid very thorough. Like, yeah. matter of fact, I'm, I'm a, as a matter of fact, I'm going to be so thorough, I'm going to make this city right up here in heaven to make sure nothing gets into it, and then I'm going to bring it down. <laughs> wow. yeah. Awesome. This is actually yeah, exciting, though, patients. Um, <laughs> That will be, will be part of the city. You know, I feel like it's really, it's, it's exciting. Yeah. But that's, a patient, that's just the city. We, remember, that's just the city. He, it, heaven is so vast. There was one guy I was watching on a, a, a Christian program, and he, uh, he was saying when he went to heaven, he said that the universe compared to heaven is like, uh, let's say you have like a towel, a white towel. The universe would be just like a one little dot compared to heaven. Oh yeah, oh yeah. That's how you you can't even wrap your head around it. Exactly, you and, and you can't even wrap your head really compared to heaven. Huh? Oh yeah, you can't you can't even wrap your head around how many people were between chapter one and chapter two. Yeah. Exactly, because it says in that the generations of the heavens and the earth and earth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Generations. It didn't say, oh, the second generation. No. Between chapter one and chapter two, chapter two begins with, and this is basically the story of the generations of the heavens and earth, which means there were heavens and earths before this. So, so, so whoever these people are, do you think they're going to, they lay down the groundwork for the rise of the beast? Oh yeah, because he's he's oh, going to yeah. be here at some point. Well, he's already here. Mm -hmm. And Elon Musk is gonna um he's gonna bring him to the light. He's gonna um welcome him in. That's his job. And what's the church's job? To demonstrate the kingdom to to manifest as the sons of God to make the kingdom of this world. The kingdom of his Christ. That's that's what the earth is moaning and groaning for for that that manifestation. And I think so. Do you think that's part of all these hurricanes and these increasing earthquakes? The while the earth is giving birth pangs, the, all these wars breaking out now and crazy stuff because the earth's dying. Well, well, first real. of all, the earth has gone through so much turmoil because she's having to open up her mouth and take up all this blood. I mean, when you look at, even when you talk about the abortions and all these things that's happening, mm -hmm. there's so much. And the reason why it's happening is because the children, um, you know, basically the children of God who are supposed to be the ones left in charge are not taking authority. Mm -mm. It's putting... They're watching Netflix. I mean, we are, first of all, we already got the ground curse because of, you know, the whole thing with Adam. <laughs> So I don't know. I, I, I mean, if if I was the ground or the earth, like you, I would you just would probably wouldn't be happy with mankind right now. Just period. But um, if the if the children of God who will, you know, that's why the scripture says, if my people, right, if my people who are called by my name, do I remember that? Mm -hmm. humble turn, themselves humble themselves and turn from their wicked ways y'all remember that in second chronicles and yeah, pray you know because to see god's face and pray he says i will hear from heaven i will forgive their sin and i will heal what the land, their land. Their land. Yeah. the land needs healing the earth has been traumatized, y'all. She's, She's tired of being used against her own people. Lot. She's been through a lot. She's been drinking blood since Cain. Been going through a lot. She needs a healing in her soul. <laughs> What's the song say? I need a healing. Yeah. <laughs> wow and then it's not fair because now she has to you know pass away for our sins 
Well, that's not the only reason. I mean, it, it's if you look at the the part of say where it says the generations of the heavens and the earth, yeah, they pass away too. Mm-hmm. So it's inevitable. It's just yeah, it's life. just yeah. That's not nothing nothing new. But yeah, but if but the, if if the people, God's people, who are called by His name, God's mm-hmm. trying to He wants to heal the land. If the land gets healed, everything else. Get lined up. We can begin to bear fruit in our lives. That's why the enemy uses curses from the earth as well against us, you know, which is another thing that he uses that we don't pay attention to. So one of the scriptures that I want to um, show you guys. Let's look at Jeremiah. This is an example of the Lord speak, well, speaking to the earth. Y'all see the screen? Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Let me just pull up the whole chapter here so I can get. But I do want to get the context of it. Okay. All right. So we are in, for those of you who want to read it from your Bibles, we are in Jeremiah 22. So this is where we see, I'm just going to read a little bit of the beginning of it so you guys can see what it says. Where it says, thus says the Lord, go down to the house of the king of Judah and speak there this word. And say, hear the word of the Lord, O King Judah, that sitteth upon the throne of David. Thou and thy servants and thy people that enter in by these gates. Thus saith the Lord, execute ye judgment and righteousness, and deliver the spoiled out of the hand of the oppressor. And do no wrong, do no violence to the stranger, the fatherless, nor the widow neither shed innocent blood in this place. For if ye do this thing indeed, then shall there enter in by the gates of the house. King sitteth upon the throne of David, right? And then it says, riding in chariots and on horses, he and his servants and his people. But if you will hear these words, he says, I swear by myself, saith the Lord, that this house shall become a desolation. So basically God is saying, hey, you're going to let them know that I, God is basically letting um, Jeremiah know, like, tell them, hey, that I'm going to execute judgment and righteousness and, and deliver the spoils of the oppressor. And then he says in verse 5, but if you will not hear these words, he's basically saying that he will make them a desolation if they don't listen to this warning that God is sending. And then verse 6 says, For thus saith the Lord unto the kings of the house of Judah, Thou art Gilead unto me, and the head of Lebanon. Yet surely I will make thee a wilderness, and cities which are not inhabited. And then verse 7 says, and I will prepare destroyers against thee, every one with his weapons, and they shall cut down thy choice cedars and cast them into the fire. And many nations shall pass by this city, and they shall say, every man do this to his neighbor. Wherefore hath the Lord done thus unto this great city? Then they shall answer, because they have forsaken the covenant of the Lord their God, and worshipped other gods and served them. Okay, so why is this judgment coming? Because they worship other gods. They've served they, 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 uh, up there further up there. They says that they spilled blood. They worship other gods and they've served other gods. The same thing we're doing in where today. <laughs> 
And it says in verse 10, weep ye not for the dead, neither bemoan him, but weep sore for him that goeth away, for he shall return no more, nor see his native country. For thus says the Lord touching Shalem, and son of Josiah, king of Judah, which resigned instead of Josiah his father, which went forth out of his place, shall return not, return thither anymore. Okay, but I don't want to read all of that because I'm really trying to get all the way. Let's just keep going because we're almost, almost there. And then let's skip down to verse 14 where it says, Thus saith, I will build me a wide house and large chambers, and cutteth him out windows, and it is sealed with, set, with cedar and painted with vermilion. And it says, Shall thou reign because thou closest thy thyself in cedar and then it says did not thy father eat and drink and do judgment and justice and then it was well with him he judged and caused of the poor and needy and then it will it was well with him was not this to know me saith the lord he's basically asking them and then he says but thine eyes and thine heart are not but for thy covetousness and for so shed innocent blood. So basically because of you know the things that they were coveting, they were shedding innocent blood and for oppression and for violence to do it. Therefore, thus says the Lord concerning Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, they shall not lament for him, saying, ah, my brother, ah, my sister. They shall not lament for him, saying, ah, Lord, or ah, his glory. Okay, he shall be buried with the burial. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay, well, basically with the burial of a, of a donkey drawn and cast forth beyond the gates of Jerusalem. Okay, and then let's keep going. Um, and so this is judgment here, okay? Y'all remember what which wind deals with judgment? Y'all remember that? It was mm -hmm. the east wind, right? So when you keep going um, down to where it says, verse 21, it says, I speak unto thee in thy prosperity, but thou sayest, I will not hear. This hath been thy manner from thy youth, that thou obeyest not my voice. So God is talking to them. He says, the wind shall eat up all thy pastors. Y'all see that? Mm -hmm. And thy lovers shall go into captivity. Surely then shall thou be ashamed and confounded for all thy wickedness. Y'all see that? The wind shall eat up all thy pastors. The wind can eat. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. The locusts and, and the parasites he brings can eat. Oh, yeah. And then let's scroll down all the way down to verse 29 as this judgment continues. It says, O earth, 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 hear the word of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Thus saith the Lord, write ye this man childless, a man that shall not prosper in his days, for no man of his seed shall prosper, sitting upon the throne of David and ruling any more in Judah. Do you see this curse? Wow. <laughs> Do y'all see this? The earth. The Lord is speaking to the earth and telling it, the, okay, so based on the judgment that he's trying to do, what curse the earth should perform here. And the earth has the ability to write. Y'all see this? Mm -hmm. Oh, earth, 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 hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord, write ye this man childless. So the earth is going to write barrenness for the man. And also write that this man shall not prosper in all of his days and none of his seed will oh, prosper. prosper. Do, you know, do we see some of the curses people are dealing with? Yeah. From the earth? 
that we're mm-hmm. all dealing with, right? Essentially. What do you think if a witch or a warlock got a hold of this right here? It would tell the earth they could tell the earth to do. She has to do it. It's recorded. Huh? I'm a little bit confused. Mm-hmm. So basically, huh. God is speaking to the earth because he's bringing judgment on these people who have disobeyed him. So he's speaking to the earth and he's telling it what curse the earth should bring forth in their lives. And it's, he's telling the earth to write the man child list. And to yeah. write that he will not prosper all of his days. So basically, the earth is writing down the curse and making mm-hmm. sure that as long as this person is on the earth, this curse is enforced. Which person, patience? Are we talking about like which people? Like the chapter. Talking about Kaniah in 20, verse 28. This man's name is Kaniah. Okay. From Judah. Mm-hmm. You, From I see, Judah. I don't know. But basically, all of this whole time, they're all going in, I mean, going through judgment. Because further up here, they went through some judgment even from the wind, where the where God says that the wind would eat up even their pastors. And then now... Okay. What is the connection? Sorry. Yeah. I just, I'm just trying to connect a few things. What is the connection with of this and what we have been reading? And from Genesis, from 1 to 5, what we have been studying? So what we've been studying so far is getting an understanding. First, we needed to get a foundational understanding of the two groups of people. And then from the two groups of people, get the understanding that the ground and the earth are different and also understand that the earth is alive. Yes. Those were what we were getting out of what we read today so far. And then now I want to show you guys what it looks like when the earth Mm -hmm. is used to curse someone. So we can understand how this earth that's alive is being used against us, even from the demonic kingdom. In this case, God is using it, but this is exactly the same way witches and warlocks use it. They speak to the earth and they say, oh, earth, earth, hear my word. And then they speak whatever curse they want the earth to write. Got it. Because the earth is alive. So which means... Which means we can we can speak to the earth as well to prosper, like not to mm-hmm. d- to do the opposite, right? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Because God spoke to the so, earth. Okay. He says, "Hear the word of the Lord," and you can say, "Earth, earth, hear, yeah. hear the words mm-hmm. of the Son of God." Mm-hmm. That's me. And usually, I'll say, "You've been groaning for the manifestation of the sons of God." I'm one of them. Earth, mm-hmm. earth, wake up, hear me. Fit up every blessing of mine that you swallowed up. You work for me now. You don't work for the witches and warlocks anymore. Swallow up every demonic altar that's working against my life and my destiny. Okay, slow down, patience. I want to write that. <laughs> well, if that's okay. okay. So you can tell the earth to swallow up any demonic altar that's working against you. You can tell it to swallow up any witch or warlock that's working against you and working against the destiny that God has written for your life. You can tell it even to swallow up anything beneath the sea that's working against your destiny. There's earth down there too. This is such a high opener. Every time I come on this live, boy, it's always something I'm new I'm learning. <laughs> wow. Look, the four winds, now the earth. <laughs> this mm-hmm. is. What do y'all think we should call this video? Hmm? I think you need to ask a question earth. that makes, makes a cur- someone curious. Like, did you know the earth is alive and can swallow up your blessings? I don't think people know this. No, a whole a whole bunch of people don't. And then you put like an earth with a big mouth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'd be, yeah, that'd be a good one. The earth, has, the earth has a mouth, right? She's mm-hmm. able to write. Yeah. Do y'all see this? She's able to and write. 
Yeah, but remember, Jesus it's also said it gives, and it bird pings. It, it also travails. So it, it actually, uh, it's in bird pangs. So it mm. actually has all kinds of stuff with it. This makes me wonder, do y'all remember when they found the woman that was committing adultery mm -hmm. and they brought her yeah. out to stone her? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the Bible says Jesus was writing in the, the, the ground. Yeah. Yes. Yes. They never mm -hmm. said what he was writing. Yeah. No, he didn't. <gasps> Interesting. Wow. That's, yeah. Yeah, you're right. It never did said, man. <laughs> so the earth has a mouth. She can write. Yeah, there's just, just so much. I'm still trying to come up with a good name, y'all. <laughs> it's kind of hard because it's it's so many <laughs> different things about it, man. It's, it's really hard to really come up with a real There's, there's so much that we learned today. So first thing we learn are the two different Adam groups, right? Wow. Mm -hmm. yeah. We learned about Adam one, which is really a group of people from chapter one who were not formed and didn't become living souls, but they were made along with the creatures who came from the earth. And then Adam 2 was one of the ones that was formed and became a living soul along with the creatures and beasts that were also formed from the dust mm -hmm. in the ground. Two different lineages of people. So we learned that. And then now we're learning about the earth. And knowing that she's alive, she has a mouth, she can write, and she has the ability to enforce a curse. Because remember, the earth is the one that cursed Cain, too, because she had to open up her mouth and take that blood. Wow. So. That's powerful. Yeah. I think it's going to be, I think once we're done with all of this, it's going to be really hard <laughs> for any crisis to work on you. <laughs> yeah. This is really, really yeah. powerful patience. Like it's very eye opening. And I'm, I'm also, I'm trying to, to also, I think that now makes sense why, you know, this new age, whatever people are talking about mother earth and wash, kind of worshipping Mother Earth and all that. They really have some information, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, really, Mother Earth, yeah. Mother they Earth understand how alone. powerful these things are. The only yeah. difference is they're using it against. Against, yeah. Mm -hmm. This is really something. It's everything in the Earth is alive that God put in here and everything he gave a purpose to. Yeah. And the purpose of anything can be used against you. Yeah. And it's not, it's not the thing's fault. It's not the thing's fault. Because it's used against you. I mean, somebody could take, you know, snake venom and use it against, use it against you. Right? Mm -hmm. They know it's poisonous and they know it can hurt you. It's funny because I used to pray, well, I still pray that the Earth will open up and swallow my enemies whole. <laughs> and now I know that it's it really can happen. This is my authority. Yeah, she really can open up her mouth and swallow up. And um, yeah. I mean, another thing that you could say is Earth, Earth, swallow up any curse that's sent against me. Mm. Man. You know, it's funny, patient. Sometimes we don't even realize there could be people working against us. And not even be aware of it. And swallow up every evil altar. Yeah. Thank you, working Jesus. against my destiny, working against my life. Amen. Cough back up and spit up any blessings that you swallowed, you mm -hmm. know, due to 
the instructions from a witch or a warlock. Yep. Yeah, this is this is good stuff, man. <laughs> That's why they're taking it out of the Bible, y'all. Really? That's why they're yeah. taking it out. They have to take it. Yeah, this is so this is really profound. They really have to take it from somewhere and it it has to be through the people. Um yeah, the Bible. I don't know. I'm just really overwhelmed, like right now. Um, yeah, it's just, it's just like you're trying to you get overwhelmed with it, so you have to take time to digest. Lot. It's a lot to digest. It's a lot to digest, and you know one thing, patience. Mm -hmm. We have, I mean, at least most of us, at least, we have read so many. At least personally, I've read Genesis like so many times. Like so, sin. I mean, and right now it just feels like right now <laughs> it's, it's my first new. time reading it and understanding it. And if I think when I go back again to to read through and study, it will even again I will get probably more revelations and more understanding. And I, I now feel like I really know nothing about the Bible and <laughs> yeah. I I, I, I agree. Yeah, I, agree. I feel like maybe everything that I've been reading, I, I've not been understanding. It feels like I need to to, to you know to go and study again. You know, mm -hmm. wow. I don't know. It, I, it, that, I, that's I, so it, true because everything we everything we learn today is right there. It's not like yeah. it's not something new or new, you know. It's right in the Bible, man. It's yeah. right there. Oh, yeah. We learn it over and over. And it's so funny because I've heard so many people preach, yeah, you know, six is the number of man. That's the day man was created. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. There were two different creations of man. Yeah. They're right there. Six day and day. But, yeah. And generations in between. Yeah. Um, and also one thing, patients, that I think I have learned through... Um, this uh, mentorship program, especially studying the word. Uh, and I think sometimes you mention it, there is a way you say text, when you read the text, when you read the text. Um, it has made me look really at the word as, yes, it's the word of God, but look at it as text and um, try to understand it like you're reading so, for example, if you're reading, let's we'll say, Paul's letters or his books or whatever, but reading it to understand it, yes, it's the word of God, but when you say text, when, you, when you're when you talking about it, it kind of makes it more not so, like, spiritual, if, I don't know if that's the word mm -hmm. I can use, you know, it makes it more uh -huh. tangible and, you know. And it makes it more easy to digest if that even if that's the word that I can use. Um I've been really loving it. I just wanted to say that. Yeah. It, it brings some richness to the teaching out. Ah, so what if I call the video Three Atoms and the Earth that can write curses? That that's a good one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But let's make sure, hey, patient, let's make sure we don't get no hate. Because, you know, there's a lot of religious people out there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's the whole point, to get them to watch the video. I want them to go off. <laughs> <laughs> Let me stop recording. <laughs> so maybe before I stop recording, I said, well, let me really tell y'all some secrets, okay? Y'all ready? Yeah. <laughs> 